In the last few lectures, we implemented the functionality for allowing the user to reset his password if he has forgot his password. Another functionality we want to implement is we want to allow logged in users to update their password if they want to. Now updating password functionality is different from resetting the password. The user will reset the password if he forgets it, but a user can update his password whenever he wants. So let's go ahead and let's implement an API for updating the password. So in the auth controller, we already have this reset password. Let's scroll down and let's also create an update password function. So here let's say exports dot update password to this. Let's assign an async function. And this function is going to receive the request response and the next function. And let's also pass this function to our global error handling middleware. All right. Now keep in mind that only a logged in user can update his password, but still we need the user to pass in his current password with the request in order to confirm the user is actually who he says. This we need to do just as an extra security measure. Okay, because let's say someone else finds your computer open and then he tries to change your password for a given site. Now he will be easily able to do that if he is not prompted to enter the current password. Right. That's why we want to keep this extra security measure in place. So inside this function, what we need to do first, we need to get current user data from the database. Then we also need to check if the current password which the user has supplied, if it is correct or not. Then if the user has supplied the correct password, in that case, we will update the user's password. And finally, we will also log in the user and send the JSON web token in the response. So these are the four steps we need to implement for updating the password. So let's start with getting the user from the database. For that, on the user, we are going to call find by ID method. And to this find by ID method, we are going to pass the ID of the logged in user. Now from where we are going to get the ID of the logged in user. Well, before this middleware will be executed, before that, we are also going to execute the protected middleware. So in this file, we have also created a protected middleware, right? If I scroll up here, we have this protect middleware. So we will call this middleware before calling the update password middleware. And in this middleware, if you remember, we are setting the current user on the request. Here you can see on the request, we are setting the user and to that we are assigning the current logged in user, right? So in this function, when we will call the protect middleware before this update password middleware on the request, we will already have the current logged in user. So we are going to get the ID from that logged in user. So here, let's say request dot user dot underscore ID also. When we are getting the document from the database, the user document from the database by its ID, it is not going to include the password in the result. So we need to explicitly specify that we also want to get the password value in the result. So for that, we can use this select function and there we can specify the field name with plus. And here we want to get the password data as well in the result. Here, let's use a wait keyword and let's assign the result to a variable. So since we are going to get a user in the result, I'm creating this user variable. And to that, we are assigning the result of this expression. So this expression it is going to return us a user document. We are assigning that user document to this user variable. So this is the first step. Next, once we have the user, we are going to check if the user password is same as the current password, which the user has provided in the request body. And to do that, if we go to the user model, there, here we have our user schema. And in the user schema, if I scroll down, yes, on the user schema, we are creating this function compared password in DB. So basically, this method we use to compare two passwords. Since the password is encrypted in the database and the password which the user is going to provide it is not encrypted that's why we have created this method so this method will basically 
compare the password provided by the user and the password in the database. So we are going to make use of this method. So let's go to our authcontroller.js and there let's write an if statement and here let's say if user dot compare password in db so this method here it will be accessible on every user document and to this we need to pass the password which the user has provided so the current user password that we are going to get in the request body so here let's say request dot body and let's say we will call it as current password and then we also need to pass the password which is stored in the database so for that this user object it is going to have a password property we are going to pass that password so this password here it will be encrypted but the current password which we are going to get in the request body it will not be encrypted so what this method will do is it will first encrypt this password and then it will do the comparison and here we also need to use the await keyword because this method it is going to run asynchronously so i'll wrap it within parenthesis like this and before this we will use not operator so this here it will return true if the current password and the password in the database is same but if it is not same so in that case this if body will be executed because here we are using the not operator so if this expression returns false in that case we simply want to return from this function and before we return we are also going to call the next middleware and from within this next middleware we are simply going to throw a custom error so for that let's say new custom error and there we will specify the error message let's say the current password you provided is wrong and let's also specify the status code as 401 that means bad request right but if the current password provided by the user and the password in the database if that is same then we can go ahead and we can update the user password so till this point if everything goes well then we are going to update the user password so for that we can simply say user dot password equals in the request body we are going to get the new password to which the user wants to update so let's say request dot body dot password then we are also going to update the confirm password so user dot confirm password equals request dot body dot confirm password and then we are going to save this in the database so we can simply say await user dot save and this time we are not going to turn off the validation because we want the validation to happen so we want to compare the password and the confirm password which the user has provided in the request body so that's why we are not turning off the validation here all right finally let's log in the user and let's send the new json web token in the response for that let's create a variable let's call it token and to create a token let's call this method sign token and to this one we are going to pass user id so user dot underscore id and finally we are going to send the response so let's say response dot status it is going to be 200 so everything is okay dot json and to this json just like earlier we are going to pass an object in that object we are going to specify the status property so status is going to be success then we are going to specify the token so we also want to send the json web token and we also want to send the data and in the data we want to send the user object the user for which the password has changed okay this let's save the changes now let's go to our auth router and there let's create a new route so let me copy this line let's paste it here and here the api endpoint is update password we are not going to send any token here in the route parameter and again we are going to call the patch method 
and for this endpoint we want to run the update password middleware and before running this update password middleware we also want to run the protect middleware so here i'll say auth controller dot protect okay so when this protect middleware will run on the request object the logged in user will be attached and we are using that in our update password middleware all right let's save the changes here so the db connection is successful let's go to postman there let me copy this url and let's open a new tab there let's specify that url and let's change the endpoint to update password and here we are going to make a patch request because if you remember in the code we are calling this patch because here we want to update a password so we are making a patch request right then we also need to go to request body there let's select raw and json and in here we need to specify an object where first we need to specify the current password we need to specify the new password so we are simply calling it as password and we also need to specify confirm password right so here let me go to this login tab and let's say we want to change password for john at gmail.com so his current password is test1234 let me copy it let's specify it here and let's say the new password is going to be pswd1234 okay now as i mentioned earlier only a logged in user can update his password so let's go ahead and let's log in this user john at gmail.com by sending a post request to the login url and here we have get the success response let's copy this json web token let's go to this tab let's go to authorization let's select bearer token and here let's specify that json web token for that logged in user okay now here first let's try to pass a wrong current password so here instead of test1234 i will pass test12345 let's send the request and here we have an error illegal argument okay this should be password okay let me try again okay now you can see the message the current password you provided is wrong so this is what we are returning from our code if the user has provided a wrong password in that case we are returning this error message now let's go back and let's provide the correct current password but let's say the password and the confirm password do not match so here i will say one two three four five so now the password and the confirm password do not match let's send the request again and here we have got this error user validation failed confirm password password and confirm password does not match so we are getting the correct error message now currently i am running this application in development mode but if you will run it in the production mode then you will get the proper error messages now let's go ahead and let's provide the same password and confirm password and this time the user's password should change so let me go to compass first and here i have opened the user collection here we want to change the password for john at gmail.com right so in the database his password is saved in encrypted form and there the last three characters are x u u okay so this is what it is currently but let's see if it changes or not so let's go back to postman and now let's send the request and now you can see we have this success response okay and we are also getting the user in the response and now if we go back and currently it is 6k xuu now let me refresh and now you will notice that for that user the password has changed so the last five characters are not same so the password has changed so the update password functionality is working as expected now here let's also go to this test tab and from here let's copy this code 
So basically, we use this code for setting the new JSON web token whenever it changes, right? Let me write that same code for this request as well. And let's save this request. And let's call it update password. In the Cineflex collection in the users folder. Let's click on the save button. And that request is saved. Now, if you go to VS Code, you will notice that this code which we are writing here, we are repeating it at multiple places. So we are repeating it here in the update password function. If I scroll up in the reset password function also, we are repeating that code. Here we are not sending the user data, but if we want after resetting the password, we can also send the user data back to the client. Okay, in the same way, we have our login and sign up functions. So here we have our login function and you will notice that there also we have the same code here also we are not sending the user data but if we want we can send the user data as well in the response to the client and we should have the same thing for sign up so here you can see for the sign up also we have the same code so what i'm going to do is here i'm going to create a new function and here i will simply call it as create send response for this function, what we need, we need the user, the data which we want to send in the response. We need the status code and we also need the response object, right? And then what we can do is we can simply copy this code here and we can paste it inside this method. Now here we need to replace this new user with this user, which we are going to get in the parameter then status code we need to replace this part here with the status code okay and here user should be this user object so since the names are same we can simply omit this explicit assignment all right and token we are creating here now we can go ahead and we can use this method at all those places where we were using this code and here we need to pass the user object so we have the user object inside this new user we need to pass the status code so it was 201 created and we also need to pass the response and that should be it let me copy this line let's scroll down to the login function and there also i will call that method so here we are going to pass this user object because the name of the variable is user status code is going to be 200 and we are also sending the response now we can remove this code from here let's scroll down to reset password it's the same thing we are doing here we need to pass the user object so we have the user object inside this user variable we need to pass the status code 200 and we need to pass the response data and now we can get rid of this code from here and finally let's do the same thing for update password so here save the changes let's go back to postman and let's test the functionality one more time so here let's go to this body there now the current password is PSWD1234 for John, right? So let's specify that current password. And now we want to change the password to test1234. Okay, let's send the request. And we are getting the success response. So it is still working. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.